tell me when yeah. we can say go. We go ahead and start recording. All right, go ahead and admit. Hi, welcome in everybody. We're gonna give everyone a second to get logged in here. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We'll get started here shortly. Hi, welcome in everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning, this afternoon now. Uh, we will get started here in a couple of minutes. Just wanna give everybody an opportunity to log in. Thanks for joining us today. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started here in about a minute. We'll just want to give everyone a chance to log in. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, out of respect for everyone's time, we will go ahead and get started this afternoon. Thank you all so much for joining us for our virtual public meeting discussing the KC Streetcar Main Street Extension Project. My name is Alex Miller and I'm leading communications and our team at Parson and Associates is leading communications currently on the KC Streetcar Main Street Extension design process. Um, without further ado, I will go ahead and hand the keys over to Donna Mandelbaum from the KC Streetcar Authority. Thanks, Alex, and good afternoon. Thank you to everyone that is attending today. It's so great to um, see either your face or your name on the screen. And thank you for being interested in the Kansas City Streetcar's Main Street extension. We have a couple of um, rules before we get started. Um, everyone's been muted. 
um, on this Zoom, and we're asking everyone to submit your questions in the chat, and we will get to all of the questions at the conclusion of our presentation. We have allowed an hour and a half for this meeting so that we can have enough time to answer your questions. What you're seeing on your screen right now is um, the agenda for the entire meeting. We're gonna give you an overall view of what's been happening with the downtown streetcar line um, and how we got to this place today with the Main Street extension as well as our other extension, the Riverfront extension. So we are working on two. Um, we're gonna roll into what's happening on Main Street at this time um, with both the utility and water work and um, also the construction schedule for the Main Street extension, which I know a lot of people have questions on. We do have updates to some of the design. And so um, we, we will take those questions at the end that um, you may have. I do, um, we have a lot to cover and I would like for, um, if you can flip the next slide, um, let everybody get familiar with the project partners. It's a key project partners for this. We have the Streetcar Authority and the City of Kansas City um, Public Works Department, as well as our partners at Ride PCATA. You'll also be hearing from our consultants with HDR and our public outreach team at Parson and Associates. And then our construction manage management team at KC Streetcar Constructors. They're very familiar because they helped build the downtown line, so they're back again. And of course, we couldn't have done this without the Federal Transit Administration, which some of you may have heard have fully funded this project with a $174 million grant that was awarded earlier this year. So that's my overview. And now we're gonna get into the overview of uh, the downtown and current extensions with Executive Director Tom Garand. Thank you, Donna, and uh, welcome everybody. It's uh, great to see a, a, such a good, strong turnout. Uh, we're happy to have you today and, and appreciate your time. Uh, I'm gonna take a, a quick step back and just remind everybody that uh, one month from today, uh, we will be operating uh, for five years. It'll be our fifth anniversary, one month from today. And it's hard to believe uh, we've come a long way as a city. And I need to thank not only our project partners, but I see many names on the participants list from board members to advocates to downtown residents who helped to push us, push the city, uh, push our partnership to do big things and to make this first project a reality. Uh, as a reminder, uh, we built the downtown streetcar, not for the sake of the streetcar, but for what it could do for our city. And we had four key goals that we identified uh, back in 2011 and 2012 around connections, development, thriving local businesses and sustainability. And I'm happy to report even during a really, really tough time of a pandemic, uh, we've seen over the course of the five year period, really remarkable results. Um, amazing ridership and utilization, amazing activation of underutilized sites and development, uh, amazing support of local business. And, and uh, we know that as a part of what we do, uh, we move people to businesses, we connect the dots, and uh, it could be maybe no, no more important than it is today as we're coming out of a pandemic, as we know well, these numbers, pre-pandemic numbers are, are looking different because our businesses have struggled. We've lost a third of our restaurants and we're, po we're, we're building and we're, po and we're posing for a rebound. Uh, we have work to do. So uh, and, and obviously none of that can happen without uh, satisfaction from the public and delivering on the promises that we said we would when we built the project uh, to continue to grow the benefits. And so uh, downtown was a start. It was always intended to be a starter line and we're pleased to be here today to talk about the expansions. And if you go to the next slide, Alex, it's, it's important and I wanna speak to, we're here to talk about the Main Street extension, but we are moving in both directions. And I just briefly wanted to reference our work to Berkeley Riverfront. Uh, this has also been awarded a significant federal grant. We have a $21 million project ATA is helping to lead on that is now at 30% design, moving to final design, and will be in con under construction in the next few years with opening and hopefully uh, in 2024. This will be an important Northern terminus, not just to connect the riverfront, 
uh, to connect everybody in the growing residential base downtown to a burgeoning riverfront and, and natural space, but obviously support and reinforce the great work from Port KC and what they're do doing on the development front to really activate that as a whole new urban neighborhood uh, that's di di directly adjacent to downtown. And then the next slide, if we move on uh, from riverfront, obviously to talk about um, Main Street. Uh, none of this would happen, but for a lot of work by a lot of people to put in place the mechanisms to get it paid for. And so that's a combination of transportation development district, local revenues. Many of you, uh, I see Jan Marcus in the chair of, of the Main Street TDD board. Uh, many of you for many years have been pushing uh, to help make the case for local funding, which has been formally secured through voter approved initiative to bring local resources to match the federal money. And what we always said as part of that effort was we weren't going to activate those sources until we secured the federal money that we needed, approximately half of the project cost to get it built and operated at a high level. And as Donna said, I'm happy to report as of January 8th, we had fully secured the full $174 million to make that project a reality. And we're now moving forward with TDD transition and activation. So we'll be activating sales taxes in, in later in the middle of the year and special assessments from the downtown to the Main Street District at the end of this year. So all a precursor to the, uh, the fun stuff, which is uh, construction operations and realizing the benefits, but really important work. So. Uh, that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and allow us to move to the specifics. And I'm going to ask uh, Jason Waldron, who is the transportation director for Kansas City, Missouri Public Works and the project manager on our Main Street extension uh, to take it from here. Jason. Alex, were you going to go ahead and uh, update us on utilities or did you would you like me to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in here again. My name is Alex Miller and um, not only are we helping out with the Main Street extension design process, uh, but also the current work that's happening on Main Street, which is private utility in Kansas City water. If you have driven down Main Street lately, I'm sure you've seen a lot of this work taking place. So we have 15 different private utility companies working along the Main Street corridor right now. Now, these utilities are in a lot of cases, upgrading their infrastructure and relocating it as well in preparation for the KC streetcar construction. Now, behind the scenes, there is a lot of coordination going on between each of the 15 different private utility companies, uh, the KCATA, KC Water, the streetcar design team, the streetcar constructors. Um, there's a lot of people at the table right now Hoping, helping to minimize these impacts along the Main Street corridor. Um, one thing I wanna note is that this work, most of it is taking place underground. So it's really hard to see when progress is being made. You might see the same hole being dug several times. Just note, it's because we have so many different contractors out there working, right? So this work happens in waves. So one week you might have spire gas and energy out there. The next week you might have Evergy, the next week Google Fiber might roll through, and then you might not have any activity for several weeks until Kansas City Water comes through and upgrades and, re, uh, and relocates their lines as well. So this is going to be the first of four times you'll see this phone number. So it's really important. So I wanted you all to have this number several times. So this phone number here, 816-337-1013. If you have any issues with the current work happening on Main Street, if you have any questions, um, please, please, please call this number. So that number goes directly to me. I've got two cell phones now, and so one of them sits on my desk. So please give us a call Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., and we will answer those. So I mentioned KC Water Work. So this project has been dubbed um, KC Water Upgrades on Main. So just like private utilities, Kansas City Water is also upgrading their aging infrastructure along the Main Street corridor. So this includes over four miles of water main replacement and four and a half miles of sewer rehab work. So there's 123 new or refurbished manholes that will take place during this project, as well as 28 new or refurbished catch basins. So right now, if you're driving down Main Street, uh, the water and sewer work is happening between 27th and Pershing 
um, which is on the east side of Main Street. They're also at 43rd, between 43rd and 45th, and they're uh, driving down the middle of Main Street, and they're also at 51st and Emmanuel Cleaver, um, about Emmanuel Cleaver, um, and that's on, again, the east side of Main Street. Um, this is going to be the most important thing I say today. Please, please, please drive slowly, drive carefully, stay off your phone when you're driving through the Main Street corridor. We have a lot of really hardworking men and women on the corridor right now, and there's a lot of activity out there. We have each of the 15 private utility companies with their one or two contractors under them, in addition to Kansas City Water. Please be safe. Please pay attention to the traffic control. They're all just like you and me. Everyone just wants to get home safely to their families at the end of the day. So please take your time while you're driving through the Main Street, Street Corridor. Please pay attention to the traffic control that's out there. Again, here's the second time you'll see this number. If you have any of issues that you see on the corridor, if something's not working right, if a sidewalk's closed um, and there's not a good detour around it, please give me a call at 816-337-1013. Please, we do ask, do not go onto an active construction site to ask a construction worker a question because chances are we have so many different construction contractors working out there right now. They only know, they're only responsible for what's happening on their block. They might not know what happened the week before or the week after that. So really the best, and I'm gonna show some different ways you can stay informed throughout all this private utility and water work, but please give me a call. It's the fastest way to reach me if you have any questions. I do have direct lines to all the superintendents out in the field right now. So if you do have an issue, if you do have a concern, Please let them do their work and just give me a call. And we'll make sure we get everything straightened out. So again, here's the third time you'll see the number, 816-337-1013. Please give me a call uh, if you have any issues. You can also email um, our project team as well at water.upgradesonmain at kcmo.org. You can also visit our project webpage. If you have not done so yet, I highly recommend it. And that is kcwater.us forward slash upgrades on main. From there, you will be able to sign up for our weekly construction update. So every Friday around noon, we send out the next week's work in an email blast and what's happening and what you can expect. So if you haven't had a chance to sign up for the weekly construction update yet, please go ahead and do that on the project webpage. You can also see an interactive map where you can see um, what work is happening in which segment. You can zoom all the way in. Uh, we also feature a business every Friday and we call it Feature Business Friday in our email blast. And we also keep an archive of all the featured businesses. So if you're curious, maybe if you're new to Kansas City and you wanna see some of the great businesses uh, that Midtown and the Main Street Corridor have to offer, you can go and you can see our archive featured business Fridays on the project webpage as well. I do wanna offer, our team is more than happy if you're part of a business group, a neighborhood group, and you would like someone to come out and provide updates um, and what to expect of what's happening on the project corridor please go ahead and reach out to us. We're more than happy to come out and present. And then the shameless plug for social media. So please make sure you follow uh, KCMO Water, which is um, at KCMO Water for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So I will go ahead and now hand this off to Jason Waldron. Thanks, Alex. Alex, sorry. Thanks, Alex. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jason Waldron, and I am the uh, Transportation Director from the City of Kansas City. And I also have the pleasure uh, of being the project manager for this project. Also with me today are uh, pro managing the project with me is, is Keith Sanders and Angie Laurie. I'm um, really excited. I'm so grateful to see the number of participants today. Appreciate everybody taking time out of their day. Um, you know, 2020 has been a rough year for most of us, but uh, we, have, we have definitely stayed busy on this project. As you can see on the slide in front of you all, a number of milestones have been reached. Um, we, we've selected our constructors, We've gotten green lights to enter into new phases with the FTA. Uh, we've brought our design up to 60%. We've had some committee uh, stakeholder, community stakeholder meetings. Um, as you well probably know, we've, we've begun construction of utilities in the corridor, as Alex described. And, and maybe a real big highlight and, and kind of what Tom alluded to was our full funding grant agreement of 174 million um, in January. Uh, what this slide doesn't have on here and what we're very proud of is we were one of four projects uh, that the FTA felt comfortable and confident in um, in accelerating, uh, which, which allowed us to get our funding sooner, which allowed us to save some costs. I'll say it on some of the bureaucracy end. And that's a real credit uh, to our team 
uh, this city and the story that we've been able to tell of, of Casey's streetcar. If you could hit the slide button. You know, as you can see, both on this slide and as well in the corridor, we are somewhere in between uh, design and construction on this project. We've got one foot in design and one foot into construction uh, with the utilities. Um, what we have done is we have completed project development. Um, not only is that a you know formal term with our federal partners, um, but you, you saw us out in the streets with some of that previous efforts of the best lane analysis and, and some other groundwork we've done. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, we are we have completed 60% design, and um, we will be uh, start formally starting uh, the next phase of design here very shortly. Our hope is to have um, our final design completed sometime this year, uh, which will lead us to conversations with our contractors. And uh, you'll probably see some construction activity as soon as this year, uh, with a lion's share of the actual streetcar construction. Uh, beginning early next year. Um, our hope is that we can complete construction sometime in and around 2024. Um, and then for those of you familiar with the starter line, um, we do have to do some testing. There will be some cars out there without people in it for a while. And um, our hope is sometime early 2025 and, and maybe even sooner um, that we will have the, the doors open for passengers for passengers. I'm just kind of just going to reset with the project. I, I, I imagine a lot of this is, is information many of you already know, um, but um, the extension from Union Station down to 51st Street um, is about three and a half miles long. Um, you know, as you know, some of the results we had from that best lane analysis, uh, the uh, streetcar will be primarily running on the outside lanes, though there will be, you know, there will be certain areas where we, we uh, you know, provide for parking lanes and, and, and other considerations. Um, there will be 15 uh, platforms um, for at nine locations. And probably the best way to really uh, zoom in and take a closer look at this is, is to visit our, our website, kcstreetcar.org. Um, I'm not a huge fan of reading from slides, but I think in this case, uh, it, it, it's warranted. And that is our station stop locations and those names. Um, those locations and names are as follows. At 27th and Main, uh, that, that stop will be named the World War I Museum Memorial. Uh, the 31st and Main location will be named Union Hill. The Armor and Main um, location will be named Armor. 39th and Main, Westport. 43rd and Main will be South Moreland stop. Uh, the 45th and Main location will be named Art Museums. Uh, Emanuel Cleaver and Main Street will be named the Plaza Stop. And lastly, the 51st and Brookside location will be the UMKC stop. Uh, again, I, I, again, this is what you see on the image on the right is, is certainly, you know, a zoomed out image. Uh, more additional detail is available on the website, kcstreetcar.org. Of course, with the expansion of our system requires the expansion of our maintenance facility. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, our existing a uh, maintenance facility is located at near Third and Holmes intersection. Um, the rendering that you see in front of you, um, what represents is we are going to expand uh, the existing facility. In other words, we're not going to have a, a, an additional or new facility somewhere on the route, or more importantly, or, or, or specifically, we're not going to have another facility along the expansion. So we will be servicing our vehicles at our lo existing location at Third and Holmes. Um, for a better reference of where that is, is uh, please see the uh, inset on the lower right corner. Um, it's kind of nestled in between and somewhat under the heart of America Bridge in Holm Street. Um, as far as the rendering goes, uh, the existing facility is represented in kind of a bland white, while the additions and the expansion of the facility is rendered and in color, uh, as you can see on the screen. You know, I, we get a lot of interest in our stops. We're very proud of those stops. Um, for the most part, our intention is to carry forth the, uh, the design from the starter line. Um, we, you know, it's kind of becomes, those stops have kind of been, become synonymous with the KC Streetcar brand. And we've always referred to them as kind of a kit of parts. And it really allows us some flexibility at each location. 
Um, and what we really like about it, and, and we could talk a lot about it, is it really uh, lends itself to some programming. Um, maybe one of the more notable programs we have is the Art in the Loop, where we partner with the downtown and um, we do have art installations over the summer and performances and, and, and other things like that. We really like that flexibility and we know we have some stakeholders along the expansion corridor also interested in, in those types of programs. And um, I, I would also add, you know, that kit of parts and, and, and kind, of the, kind of the low impact really allows us to kind of integrate into the surroundings of each location. And as you can see on the screen here, uh, we do have some renderings to kind of give you a feel of what those will look like, including a rendering in front of the American Century Building at 45th and Main. You know, there are some stops that are different than others, and we've recognized that our plaza stop, which we've nicknamed the gateway stop, uh, will require more of a, a robust approach. And what you see here is kind of an artistic rendering of that uh, stop. We do have some additional renderings to follow. Um, you know, we needed it to be a little more robust to uh, accommodate the anticipated additional um, intermodal um, integration that we think we'll see here, and of course, the projected ridership. The next slide, the next slide is a, maybe a better overall perspective of that plaza gateway stop. As you can see here, it is going to be, it's going to be intermodal in that we're going to share this space with our buses to kind of provide uh, a seamless integration uh, between the two modes. Um, you'll also note that just to the east, but to the top of your screen there, we do plan to uh, improve that existing parking lot to provide, uh, whether you want to call it a park and ride or a kiss and ride, but to allow people to, you know, access the streetcar at this location. Um, another point to note, and it may not be as explicit on this, but um, we do plan for this stop to be semi-exclusive in that um, this space, those lanes that you see to the east, will be exclusive to streetcar and um, bus traffic. Um, we will still maintain um, mostly the same lane configurations um, of the existing road. We will just be shifting those uh, vehicle lanes to the west. Uh, again, really intent here is to have that seamless experience for those wanting to access the streetcar in and around the plaza. Uh, here, of course, is a third perspective of that same plaza gateway stop. Uh, this perspe perspective, of course, is coming from the parking area, kind of looking um, what, at Northwest. Um, the other notable stop will be our Southern Terminus, and that's what our UMKC stop. Um, this stop is a very important stop uh, for both the KC streetcar as well as UMKC. And we have been in partnership and conversations with UMKC from the start of this project. In fact, we've actually been able to work with some of their students and programs to kind of bring them in uh, to these conversations and, and let, let them use this as an educational experience for some of their programs. Um, and you'll see, we're gonna have a little better review of this in some of the following slides, but not only is it just a streetcar stop, but we know, you know, obviously and near and dear to my heart is the trolley track trail. Of course, we will maintain um, access to the trolley trail. We will have, it will be somewhat relocated somewhat to the east. Um, and of course, yeah, if you could see there, there is a plaza area there um, that we think will be very important, not only for a space to program things, but also for that intermodal connection with whether it be dockless scooters, bicycles, pedestrians, you name it. Um, and maybe another thing to note, and this is, I can't help it, I am an engineer, but um, the stop itself will be double-sided, maybe hard to see in this rendering, but um, cars will be able to dock basically on either side of this station stop, and that will uh, create some additional operational efficiencies that, that we're looking for. Uh, we anticipate a lot of ridership at this stop as well. Um, here is just kind of a simplistic rendering of that stop um, at the UMKC. We really, you know, we on one hand, we want to have that, you know, programmable space with, with the shelter that you see in blue, but it's really important to us that there's really ease and free flow of access of our pedestrians. And so we, we, want, it, we want it to be open. And, uh, you know, like I said, for pedestrians and ADA clearances and whatnot, uh, to really provide easy access to our riders. And um, this slide might be a little bit hard to tell, but this is a, a slide maybe kind of looking almost from 51st Street towards the streetcar. 
what you can get a feel of is kind of what that pedestrian space may look like. Um, of course, we're at 60% design, we're far from over, but we're really excited about this space and how it kind of be interwoven into the fabric of the whole entire system. And I kind of went through those slides fairly quickly. Of course, uh, they only gave me a few minutes, as you can imagine, I could probably talk about this stuff for hours, but I assure you all, uh, we will have an opportunity for a question and answer. But what, I would, what I'd like to do is hand it over to our uh, constructor partners with Aaron Adams. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Aaron Adams. I am the project manager for KC Streetcar Constructors. Uh, we are a joint venture between Herzog Contracting and Stacy and Whitbeck. Herzog is out of St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, Stacy and Whitbeck are partner out of Alameda, California. Um, we are the we are the same group that that uh, built the downtown starter line, and we are definitely excited to be back for uh, for this extension. Uh, which what's shown on the screen is is our office location. Uh, this is at the corner of of Armour and Main, uh, formerly the the Hostess Building. So we are uh, we are right on the alignment. And uh, again, like I said, looking forward to to beginning the job. We can advance to the next. We just wanted to uh, wanted to show the group here that that we are plugged in. We are in our pre construction phase, but uh, this is a it's a big phase for us to get plugged in and begin our, our planning uh, and, and work with, with stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we do have a website, what's shown on the screen, buildkcstreetcar.com. Uh, we encourage you to visit that uh, eventually, once we do get closer to construction and, and also closer to opportunities, this will be the location that we we post all that information to the public and uh, and and hope to get some some input from the public. Also, uh, our, our, well, I guess back real quick. We can also be, uh, please follow us at, on, on our, uh, our Twitter handle at buildkcsc. So now you can move on. Okay, so this is a, uh, a similar schedule to what Jason uh, had up on the screen a little while ago. Um, as you can see, we're, we're approaching construction. We're not quite there yet. Uh, a lot of exciting things have happened prior to where we stand right now and a, and a lot of lot, lot more excitement coming uh, coming soon. So next. So our, our upcoming, uh, one of our up, upcoming pre-construction activities is to begin our subcontracting outreach events and, and opportunities. Uh, we've, we've just finished up our 60% effort with, uh, with the city and the designer, which leads us into you know, beginning to to parse out scopes and uh, gauge interest in different scopes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this, once we get through the 60%, it really does kick us off for, for more of an engagement uh, phase in the project. Um, again, as I mentioned, once we, once we get some of these outreach events uh, scheduled, we will post them on our website and on Twitter. Uh, they can also be found. We're, we're interlinked with with Ride KC Streetcar. Uh, there's many many different ways to get in touch in touch with us. Um, on to construction, which is which is highlighted there. We we do hope to begin constructing uh, certain certain parts and pieces of the of the Main Street extension in in late 21, possibly early 22. Um, and then final slide. So just to, uh, I, I would assume the majority of the group probably uh, has witnessed some of the starter line installations, uh, but just, just again, to kind of go through at a high level, you know, we do plan on uh, doing some utility upgrades for the streetcar, so those would involve even, even a few more drainage inlets, et cetera, et cetera, specific to track. Uh, there is track construction track demo, track construction, the, the station stops that Jason just went through. Um, there'll be various poles on the project, OCS, which is the, the streetcar power, uh, also new traffic signals, new traffic lights, um, do some civil improvements, new, new curbs, gutters, sidewalks, uh, new ADA ramps throughout. 
and then kind of towards the towards the end we get a we get a brand new asphalt roadway uh, all the way throughout the course of the project um, again just just like Jason I probably buzzed through this pretty quick but uh, thanks uh, thanks for your time and I'll pass it on to Dick Thank you, uh, Dick Gerald with Rye KC ATA. And we wanted to take a few minutes and talk about the intermodal connections that'll be coming with the Main Street streetcar. And one of the important messages is that we are designing these connections in now. So they'll be safe, convenient, and comfortable when the streetcar starts operating. This becomes really the regional transit spine. If you take a look at the graphic here shown on the screen, you'll see the red is the Main Street streetcar corridor and the Main Street streetcar. So it runs through the heart of Kansas City, Missouri downtown, but also the heart of the transit region as a whole. And there are connections really at all of the stations on the Main Street streetcar. And I'm just gonna talk a little bit about those starting on the north end at Third and Grand. So Third and Grand is the northern end of the Grand Avenue bus corridor through downtown. Most of the north-south buses that run through downtown Kansas City use Grand Avenue from 27th to 3rd. So connections could be made there with that connection, with that Grand Avenue corridor, as well as with our Northland services on our Northland spine route on North Oak, the 201. Through downtown, the streetcar intersects with the east-west transit spine on 11th and 12th streets. Again, providing connections to the west side and into Kansas and KCK and Johnson County, and then to the east with connections on Prospect Max, Truce Max, and the East Village Transit Center. 27th Street, there's a connection with the southern end of the Grand Avenue bus corridor through downtown for convenient connections through downtown on the bus system. And then as you head south, there are major connections at 31st Street, a major east-west trunk line at 39th Street, again, a major seven day a week very frequent service on 39th Street. And then at the Plaza Station, as has been mentioned, that's the uh, Plaza Gateway Station. Across the platform connections there with some of the key north-south bus routes, including a new route, because Main Street Max will be replaced by the streetcar. But south of the Plaza, we will add the new Main Brookside Waldo connector to make those connections to Waldo and Brookside from the Plaza Station. There will also be significant connections at that station along Cleaver Boulevard. Again, the major east-west route that includes services such as our 47th route, 47th route that goes east. The route also goes west through the plaza. There will also be a connection there with one of Johnson County's primary routes, the, the 401, which is their Medcalf transit spine, will connect there with the streetcar. So throughout the corridor, there are connections with the transit system. There will be bike share stations. And one of the keys is, as I said, designing in those connections now. So the connection from the bus to the streetcar will be convenient, easy to understand, will have a safe pedestrian pathway and comply with all ADA requirements so everyone can make those connections from whatever mode of transit it is to the streetcar in the corridor. With that, I will turn it back to Alex and Taylor. Yeah, thanks, Dick. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to stop my screen share. Uh, my colleague, Taylor Rippey, she is going to pull up um, how we want to help collect feedback from you all. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share so Taylor can go ahead and jump in there. Um, just a reminder, um, we will be answering all the questions we received in the chat uh, until 1.30 um, after, after Taylor's section here. So if you do have questions, again, while Taylor's presenting, feel free to type them in the chat and we will get to them here um, right after Taylor gets done. So Taylor, go ahead and take us away here. Uh, Taylor, you're on mute if you're talking. Yeah, sorry about that guys. Um, as Alex said, my name is Taylor Rippey and I'm with Parson & Associates. So I will be helping with communications on this project. Um, and we wanted to show you our interactive map that might look a little bit familiar if you viewed the KC Water interactive map. Um, but first things first, you'll want to go to buildkcstreetcar.com. When you get to the website, if you scroll down, you will see um, preview the route and share your thoughts. So here is where you can actually find the interactive map. 
It will start with a little welcome screen with some general information about the map, but I do want to point out that the map will be closing for comments uh, at 5 p.m. on Friday, May 7th. Um, so we, you have about a month to provide feedback. It also has a little bit of information about how to use the tools on the map, but I'm going to go ahead and share that with you all now. Um, so here in the top right corner are your main tools. This first button will allow you to share the map directly to your social media or via email, messenger, or just by link. Here you can filter out all of the comments and markers. So for example, if you only wanna see where the station stops are, you can turn all of these other markers off. If you wanna search comments made by other people, you can do that here. I also wanted to show you all that you can um, translate this map to any language offered by Google Translate. So for example, if you wanted to have everything in Spanish, uh, you can see now everything has been translated. I'll go ahead and change it back just for um, today's purpose. Um, and then also in this top right corner, you'll see this plus and minus arrow. That is how you can zoom in and out of the map. On the left hand side here, you'll see four sidebar tabs. This about tab will have the same information in that welcome screen. So if you need a reminder about the, when the map will be closing or the, how to use some of those tools, that is all located here. As you heard earlier in the presentation, um, there was some mentions of OCS polls um, and TPSS. Um, so here on the sidebar tabs explains what those are a little bit more and even provides pictures of what it could look like based off of the starter line. Um, so you're welcome to come into here and read through those. And finally, there's also a survey. Um, so when you provide comments on the map, it will be viewable for the uh, entire public. Um, but if you want to provide some feedback directly with the project team, you can do that here. Um, so you can provide your information. Let us know if you want a project team to follow up regarding your questions and then provide your email. Finally, on the right hand side, you'll see this legend has been following us around. If it starts to bother you, feel free to exit it out as you can pull it back up at any time. So for the actual map, you'll see there's some of these different markers already. Here is where you can look at the station stops. It will pull up some renderings of the stops or what the stops could look like and also has the name. You can click on the picture and it will enlarge it for you. If you exit out of that, you'll see on all of these information markers, you can start a discussion. So if you want to make a comment about this particular stop, you're welcome to do so here. You can also like or dislike it or share it directly to your Facebook or Twitter. You'll see there are a few different types of information markers. This one is an existing traffic signal that will be modified to include a transit only phase. Um, so definitely click around here and um, read some of that information. In terms of how you can engage, you'll see here at, whoops, apologize, at the top of the map, um, let me make this so it's a little bit easier to see for y'all. At the top of the map, you'll see there's three different options for you to drag and leave a comment. So you can comment on something you like, you can leave a general comment, or if you have construction concerns, you can leave that a comment about that as well. Um, so for example, that um, proposed park and ride that was discussed earlier, if you really like it, or even if you have construction concerns, whatever it may be, you'll just pull down the information marker, drop it there, you can leave your comment and email. If you want to provide more information, you're welcome to, but you do not have to. And if you have a photo that might support your comment or um, help people to understand your comment, you can attach that as well. Once you're done, you'll add the comment and it will stay here on the map and other people can then leave comments and like or dislike your comment. We ask that everyone just respects each other on here um, and Make sure you read other comments if you're going to leave a comment in the same place as you can start a discussion and get involved in that same comment. So from here, I'm going to pass it back to Alex so he can um, talk a little bit about or walk you through some different question and answers. Alex, I'll give it back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor. Again, keep those questions coming um, again. And then you'll see again, I didn't want anyone to forget the project hotline number. There it is for the fourth and final time. So here's all the different contact information. I know we've gotten some uh, uh, pitches in the chat uh, for firms and everything like that. Again, I'll send you all to uh, the Build KC Streetcar uh, website. And then again, here's all the different project web pages as well and how you can stay in contact with us. Um, so I'll start off. Uh, Tom, 
here's a question for you regarding the TDD. Uh, can you provide more detail on when TDD assessments will occur and how businesses and res residents will be notified of the amount they owe? Uh, yes, Alex, happy to. Uh, great question. <clears throat> so uh, the, TD the TDD transition has initiated and we are in the process of deactivating the downtown uh, sales tax and special assessment and activating the Main Street TD, uh, special assessment and sales tax. Uh, with regards to schedule on that transition, uh, the current, uh, if, if things go as we anticipate they will, uh, the, the sales tax will be transitioned to the broader Main Street district that was outlined on that map as, as the, the dark black line on July 1st of this year. And special assessments would be transitioned for 2021 uh, and would be sent out uh, by the county at the end of this year. Uh, the, I know the TDD is working on, it's talked about uh, sending out a, uh, an advanced communication uh, sometime over the course of the summer for preliminary notification, uh, but then a formal notification will be sent out along with the county uh, consolidated tax and assessment bill, uh, which typically is, is issued in the October to November timeframe. I think uh, this is a multi-year, the special assessment district as approved as a 25 year district. So it's not a one-time uh, fee. It is an annual special assessment to support the local share of the debt service on the project, as well as the ongoing operations and maintenance uh, required to run the system. Great, thank you. We had another question regarding TDD, but I think that answered it. Um, I did Go want ahead. to mention, and I think it was it, it's a sort of a catch-all. You've highlighted the website four times. I will say it a fifth time relative to the TDD. Uh, under the Main Street page, there is TDD information and a whole host of details there if you want, if people want maps, links to resources to try to uh, better understand what individual special assessments would be. Uh, you can find that on the website at kcstreetcar.org. Great. And then we had a question about putting up signs uh, in the grass to let the public know what is going on um, to get more signage out there. That is something that as we've been working with the private utility contractors, it's not something I can promise at this time, but it is something that we've uh, talked through with the contractors about getting more signage out there to show uh, who is working where. Um, again, with so many contractors bouncing around, um, it is a little bit difficult I'll also mention that the contractors are moving and upgrading their equipment on their own dime. Um, so it's not, it's not contracts through the city, it's contracts through the private utility companies. So there is only so much we can require of the contractors, but getting more signage out there has been something on our priority list that now as the weather's getting warmer and more utilities are getting out there, it is something that we will be working on. So thank you for that note. Um, and then here's a question for either Tom or Donna. When do you plan to commence on the streetcar truce corridor extension? So, so I love the question. Uh, we, we do not have a, any plans at the present uh, to advance on, on a true streetcar, but I will say uh, certainly in working with ATA, uh, we're always thinking and, and looking to the future uh, beyond just these extensions. And we do have transit priority corridors. Truce is an active a BRT corridor and, and was a former streetcar route. So you never, never say never, we have more work to do, but those sorts of comments uh, in terms of the general public ap appetite for streetcar is one of the things that drives progress and conversations about what future opportunities are. So uh, if you wanna see it, uh, feel free to uh, chime in and please let us know. Yep, and a similar question about uh, the Independence or Linwood uh, extension. Yeah, the, uh, the same the same would apply. Uh, we've got an active effort underway right now with uh, Ride KC. I'm thinking about regional funding. Uh, we talked a lot about the Main Street TDD, which is a really unique funding mechanism to support the construction of these projects. But the truth is, it's not the right funding solution for many other, if any other corridors in the region based on their, their land use and makeup. And so uh, future extensions really have to be coupled with a broader financing strategy conversation and regional funding conversation for transit more broadly. And the good news is we've got an active process underway uh, that's talking about those things. So um, 
we've got these two extensions funded moving forward and conversations are now picking up on, on where alternative extensions beyond these might lie and the degree to which there's public support for those extensions. Great, so then we had a question about parking. So I'll tap on Nick Statham from HDR on the design team on this one. Um, and then Tom, maybe you as well. Um, and so the question was, I think the parking on the plaza is great, but it seems a little small. I'm concerned about lots of parking being at the UMKC stop area in the neighborhoods. Any planned parking options at UMKC? Well, I'll jump in. Um, we are not building a um, single use uh, park and ride facilities at UMKC. The, un the, the unique nature of UMKC is different, obviously, given the institutional and neighborhood uses, but we are working actively with them on conversations for you know, set aside or utilization of existing facilities, as well as our campus master planning effort that is ongoing, that is that is looking at opportunities for redevelopment of the Oaks Place apartments, uh, which currently has a parking garage that remains intact and available, but they are the university is going through a broader, more strategic effort on land use and development needs for that area, and we're actively engaged. So we anticipate a partnership with them in some form or fashion and that's something that's ongoing and, and uh, as they go through their campus master planning we'll have more details on the detailed parking arrangements in the coming uh, year or two great uh, nine zero properties had left us a comment to follow up with after the meeting we did receive your your uh your, your concern and your contact information so thank you for sending that i will follow up with you after this meeting. oh go ahead nick no i think tom answered the question Perfectly. Okay, great. Uh, TD, follow-up question. You mentioned the starter line assessment and tax were being uh, decommissioned and just stated that the assessment would be for 25 years for the extension. Why the difference? Perhaps I misunderstood. So the downtown TDD uh, was on the special assessment side, did have the same time frame, the 25 year life, which is really related to the payback of the debt that's, that we're taking on to build the project. And so it is the exact same structure. It's the exact same rates that we're applying to properties that we've applied downtown, both in terms of special assessment and um, in sales tax. So it's the same structure, the same rates that are being applied uh, downtown will be applied to Main Street. Uh, we just have to deactivate Main Street, uh, I'm sorry, downtown. So we don't have an overlap and a, and a duplication of taxes on the downtown district. So that will be dissolved. It will be replaced by a more holistic district, but all of the same parameters in terms of the length of time of the assessments, as well as the rates or the caps of rates uh, will remain the same. Great. Um, we do have a little bit of time left. We might get out of here a little bit early. Are there any other questions that we might have missed? Hey, Alex, there are some additional questions in the chat. Alex, I can go ahead and jump in with mine since it's kind of long to read if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, mine was about, uh, and I'm sorry if I missed some of this, but I'm curious about the intersections that aren't necessarily um, streetcar stops, but are still along the corridor. And I'm thinking specifically of um, Volker at Maine um, and what, what partnerships are happening with Public Works or other plans to improve those intersections. I'm thinking specifically of it being a great chance to give people more pedestrian access to the plaza library, but that intersection being incredibly dangerous right now. So I'm just curious, uh, would love to hear your plans for how other intersections are being enhanced for pedestrians. Yeah, I can, I can jump in here. This is Jason Waldron. Although we probably won't be able to resolve, you know, every concern at this intersection um, in the area, we are we we already have uh, included some measures in our design to improve the pedestrian access, which we, which we want to do. Um, in particular, if you're familiar with the, which it sounds like you very much are, um, if if you recall, if you're going northbound on Main Street, you've got that uh, slip lane to Volker. Uh, we 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 intend to reclaim that space for green space. 
thereby taking um, away one more, um, you know, intersection between pedestrians and vehicles and, and, and providing better connectivity for both pedestrians and the trolley track trail. Um, as far as those um, crossings across Maine, you know, we're going to, each and every intersection we're going to look at, and the pedestrian experience is a driver of this project. So though I'm, I'm not sure we're going to resolve, that's a big intersection. We all know that, Volker, a lot of concrete there. Um, although we may not resolve every issue with this project, we certainly intend to improve um, the crossings at every location that we can. Great, thank you so much. And then John Glesser, you had a question about um, that new KCATA route map. I will get with those folks over at KCA and Dick Gerald. I'm not sure if you all have that on your website or if that has been uploaded yet. I know that map is fairly new though. Well, uh, I think it's a really good question. The map actually does need some updating. We will be doing that in the context of what we're doing right now on what's called Ride KC Next, which is taking a look at the entire system in the city. And when that effort is concluded, I think we can have a much more up-to-date map Conceptually, the map is fine, but the details need some tweaking and adjustments. And I think we'll have that later this summer. Great. Um, then we had a, a question about streetlights on Main Street. Uh, will the new streetcar preempt the existing streetlights along Main Street? Yes. Uh Gabriel, you're using technical language, and I understand you're in the industry. Um, but uh, so uh, for everyone, there will be uh, you talk about the traffic signals, and there will we don't have preemption uh, with our traffic signals for uh, streetcar, but we do have some priority, uh, some transit signal priority, and we do uh, intend to include that in our extension, just like we have it um, in the starter line. Uh, we may be exploring different options and different designs, but yes, the intention is to include priority. Uh, but not so much pre preemption. Hopefully that answered your question. Any other questions or concerns? Do we have any business owners in the meeting? Great. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining this this afternoon. Again, you have our contact information. Uh, this recording of this public meeting will be available on the KC Streetcar YouTube channel um, here after our net. We have another meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. So if you have any friends, family, neighbors, uh, co-workers who haven't had a chance to sign up yet and you think uh, they'd like to, there's still a chance for them to sign up for tomorrow's virtual public meeting. It's the same presentation as this one here but just wanted to let everyone know that we do, there is another opportunity. So then on Thursday, these videos, these public meeting recordings will go up on the KC Streetcar YouTube channel. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Enjoy the weather.